You guys got us? Gotcha. All right, man. Let me know when you're ready, Charlie, and we'll get ripping. Yeah, rock and roll. All right. I thought, uh, first, I'd give you a little background. I thought, um, you know, regarding the trip and the game. And so Saturday morning, uh, we heard a really important message about sacrifice. And it was actually from uh, Michael Phelps, and who was absolutely a one-of-one one competitor. But being on the road for eight days, um, that is sacrifice. And that sacrifice also leads to a lot of connection on the team. And it looks like a whole bunch of things on the field. It looked like, uh, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, you know, competing until the clock hits zero. Um, you know, OZ, the crazy support he has on the sideline for all his teammates. And uh, same thing with J-Mac and the sideline going crazy for special teams tackles for guys like Sinnott and Yankoff and Mike Davis. And so um, those moments, they help, you know, about what sacrifice is all about and playing and competing. And uh, at the end of it, I think I told you a little bit last night, I was pleased to see the complimentary football. And I thought there was a clear illustration of it, of a fourth stop uh, at the end of the half, which led to points to get the ball to start the second half. And that's so important for us uh, to do. So that was, uh, you know, kind of what I'd hope we'd see when we're playing team, you know, football all the way through. And so uh, we're jacked to be back home and uh, get in front of the fans. And, uh, I think the environment at the stadium is going to be uh, absolute wild and uh look forward to that all right we'll go uh nikki to start hi dan um it, it seems like the o-line has really put it together over these last couple games what has been the biggest difference you think for those guys well i thought you know having the run game and the play pass it was probably in this game nick we use as much play pass as we have even through the first two and uh, when you have both going, that's kind of the whole art of the thing where the run game gets going and you step up and you rip a play pass over them or you're waiting for a play pass and the run game's going. So having the ability to have balance on both of those, um, I thought that's really one of the keys. But uh, it certainly doesn't hurt um, to see this in and connection going, uh, you know, all the way down the line. But um, the play pass and the running game, those two things, when they go hand in hand, that's really what makes us click. And this may be somewhat of a dumb question, but um, Ben Robinson, he runs so hard, runs angry. Have you seen him on the the day after games? Like, what is he like the day after games? Can you, can you yeah. move after that? Yeah, he, he can. Um, he's uh, definitely built differently. Um, he's that tough. He is that strong. Um, but, yeah, but, like, for a guy, him, you know, 21 carries or something along those lines. Um, but he also dishes out a lot of punishment, too. But, uh, yeah, there's some days he's more sore than others, but uh, by and large, um, he's usually ready to get rolling right again, Nikki, without too much space in between. We've leaned on him, and he had to lean in a little more even this game, you know, with Austin not being there, and uh, we knew that going in. Tom? Hey, Dan, can we get a quick career update on a couple guys, um, Jordan McGee, Mariota eligible to come out this uh, this week, and then Nick Allegretti, anything update on his ankle? Yeah, so um, Nick had injured his ankle in the game, and so we'll see what he looks like, um, you know, going into this week, John. So um, certainly, you know, we'll see what the practice looks like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday um, to see how much work, you know, we'll give to him and to be ready, but uh, um, still kind of on the early stages of that. And then as far as um, return to play goes, uh, we'll definitely have an update for you on day once, um, you know, we get, you know, kind of moving forward with those. But, uh, yeah, people are definitely trending in the right spots. And then with Cliff's offense, as a defensive guy, what makes it hard to – what makes it effective? Right. I think there's probably more than one thing, like most offenses that are tough to defend. I'd say there's an element of tempo, John, right, where it can be in and out, at the line, working some things, some with cadence, some without – um, then there's the element, like I was hitting earlier about the runs and the play passes that go with it. And if you can make those two things look similar, John, um, with gap schemes and pulls, and then, you know, be able to throw, you know, to the tight end and, you know, slants of, off of run action that can make it challenging because your eyes are obviously at the line of scrimmage, ready to defend the run. And then, you know, to rip a play pass to go. And then I'd say that the third element, which is not necessarily scheme driven, but it's Jaden and his ability to create you know, a second play, uh, you know, out on the move. And those are things that make it difficult. So it's run and play pass. That's a combination. And then the combination of Jaden, you know, 
outside the pocket, you know, with his legs creating some first downs. That's that's what makes it tough. But the tempo is a big part of it too. Thank you, Ben. Hey Dan, I'm just wondering after looking at the tape, what did you make of the play of your secondary, particularly really, uh, your cornerbacks? You know, I thought um, first from the entire secondary, um, Ben. I thought going in this was going to be a tough challenge, and uh, so I thought you know from an overall standpoint, you know, arrow definitely up for us. You know, to have kind of the whole thing going together, some rush on Murray, you know, to go into that space. I thought Chin had, you know, probably one of his better performances um, at the safety spot. I thought he was aggressive. He had some chances to make some tackles, and I thought those were good. Uh, on the outside, certainly I thought they made a good pass on the, you know, first drive that was a touchdown to Harrison. Um, we were in man-to-man -man on the play. He threw a good ball and completed it outside. So, um, you know, those are the ones that you want the contested catches and going to fight for it. But uh, I got to tip my hat to them on a good play. But I thought um, third downs, I thought, was the real thing that that changed it for us, Ben, in this game, um, to give the ball back to the offense. And then offensively, we were able to convert the third down. So, like, that to me was the swing in this game was the third downs on both sides. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, I know you've been busy the last 24 hours, so I don't know how much of these – crazy stats you've seen but there's like a billion stats out there about what you guys have done over the first four games on the offense and Jaden specifically have you has, have, has any of them stood out or one maybe seen sort of or emblematic of what has been the offense has been able to accomplish so far I think the uh probably the amount of completions uh Ben I would say one of the uh, topics that we look for are runs and completions together when you add those two I don't know if that's um in the billions of stats, but it's one that I like. <laughs> so when they are 55 or over, you have a good chance to really possess the ball. And uh, so that's one of the ones that uh, I always like to see. And that was well above that in this game. So I'd say the ability to have these completions and that's just not Jaden, that's the protection, you know, to have a game where, um, you know, the offensive line was able to protect and uh, allow him to, you know, deliver the ball to the right spots. That's a big deal too. But uh, those were, that's one of the ones that I, um, that I'm always looking for. And to see that come through on a few of the games so far, that's a big deal. Donna. Hey coach. Uh, could you talk a little bit about Armstrong and what did you see from him on yesterday that really stood out? You got it, Donna. I thought um, overall, I actually felt a pretty strong connection um, you know, from the entire defense. You'd heard us talk earlier about um, courage and rub and working together. And so those were some of the things that I wanted to see in this game. Could they be really more in sync uh, together to balance each other out? I thought the line did a good job, you know, of not allowing Murray to get outside the pocket uh, too many times because, as we all know, like like Jaden, he's a dual threat. And when he gets outside on the perimeter, the second plays begin, and he can sometimes just outrun leverage or contain just based on his speed alone. I think we saw some games, you know, in the past, and I've probably been part of some of them, where even when you have somebody spying him, uh, that he's able to go and convert. So I thought for those guys to, you know, for the most part, keep him inside in the pocket, uh, that was deal for us. And in the last two weeks, what has really stood out overall with this team that you like with the direction that they're going in right now? I would say the complimentary side of things, Donna, when you see, I wish you could be on the sideline to see the support these guys have for one another. And that's what I was, you know, hoping for us to become, you know, to have that kind of support where maybe there was an example of that where we threw an interception and there was a three and out. And that was the defense's way of letting them know, hey, man, we got your back. And same thing, you know, on a special teams, the way the guys are covering to try to create field position. And so those are the moments that I felt that connection on the sideline between one another. When the offense is up, you'll see the defensive players there. I saw the PAT team out there and uh, lo and behold, after the extra point, I saw five and 54 as the first guys out on the numbers, you know, to connect with the offense. And um, so those are the small things that don't show up on the stat sheet, Donna. But I do know that um, their connection is starting to take place. And I think part of that comes from sacrifice, where you're seeing all that time together and how they work together. You've heard me talk a lot about competition. And that's us at practice as well. And they know it's the work that they put in together 
that allows them to go really hard. And uh, if we continue to do that and continue to build how hard the guys go at practice and then get that to carry over into the game, that's what I want, you know, our fans and our family and friends see us every time we go, man, like these guys absolutely empty it out and bring it. And it does take sacrifice and connection to be able to play that way. Andy. Hey there, coach. Good afternoon. Um, you mentioned some of this in your opening statement about Senate and Yankoff in, in, in their play yesterday. So just want to pull on that thread a little bit more on what are you seeing out of the tight end group specifically from yesterday's game? Uh, yeah, referring to the opener, it was honestly, um, it was a special teams tackles, uh, one on a punt with Ben and one on a kickoff um, with Yankoff. We played Senate more in this game. You know, he got more reps um, than he's had probably in the previous ones. We knew the play pass was going to be a big part of this. And Ben's really equipped in that way in the run game, running routes. And so to see, you know, coming on more, uh, that's a big deal. And so having Zach there, um, it was actually really cool to see Candy, like on those two special teams plays, the first person probably to go see him was Zach. You know, see his uh, little brothers out there making a tackle and stuff that he does not do. So <laughs> we had a lot of fun uh, seeing that. But that's the type of energy I'm looking for from those guys. And, uh, you know, as Ben gets going more and more, I think um, you'll feel his energy, his strength, his speed, you know, as the games progress. And yesterday and um, the after game presser, you mentioned some penalties that you didn't like. So after you had an opportunity to take a look at the film, what were those penalties and what did you see there? Um, one, we had an illegal formation that we definitely had all over. So you've heard me talk about pre-snaps and post-snaps. Those have to go away. So one of those was pre-snap. Then the other two were actually um, post plays, some two unsportsmanlike ones. And so one was taunting for uh, throwing out the um, Donna, you should like this one for the Usain Bolt arrow. You've got seen as a weapon instead of Usain Bolt. So we'll put that one on ice. And then the other one was on the sideline candy. That was a, uh, a taunting foul. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll check it into the league. I certainly don't think that was uh, OZ's intent. I think if the official known who the person was, he probably wouldn't have thrown it. <laughs> he doesn't have that way about him. But, um, hey, that's what they saw. That's what they called. And those are the things, Candy, if you don't step on them right now, um, you know, then those things fester. And so we're not going to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. David Harrison. Hey, good afternoon, Coach. Um, speaking of things that we don't get to see readily when we're observing the game and not inside of the game like you guys are, Tyler Biotish, can you share a little bit of, of the things that happen, kind of play to play and even behind the scenes that make him an effective part of this team? Yeah, one of the challenging parts about playing center, um, on so many of these plays, uh, they've yet to target, you know, who belongs to whom. And mm -hmm. when you, on a traditional offense, you have a little bit more time. You can get to the line of scrimmage, you know, this is what I see. If they shift, you change it. When you're going more quickly, those are when it, you really have to process quickly, like a QB. And so on the runs and the passes, Tyler's right in the middle of all that, you know, to make sure the declaration's right, who we're going to, how we're going to go. And so for a team like Arizona, who plays multiple fronts, has a good blitz package and a safety that can just honestly show up in a blitz from just about damn near anywhere, uh, he's somebody he had to keep an eye on. So that would be one. And then the second part, uh, in this part, of, he hasn't done this a lot, you know, in his career, but I thought him pulling and being on the move, uh, there were some good plays that I saw on that. And that's another added part of things. When you get another big guy out on the edge on some of the lead blocking that went uh, to Brian, I thought that was a big deal. And then on the other side of the ball, Coach Emmanuel Ford's coming back for the first time since the thumb surgery. What you kind of overall see from his performance? Yeah, and I don't know the exact number of reps that we had. Um, we thought he you know, did a good job on the deep ball coming up. I think um, – afterwards had him as a missed tackle as well so probably going into it you know like keep training keep digging for it and uh we had moved same or still outside some i'm sure you probably saw that as well so mm -hmm. we keep continuing to compete and find the right combinations and how we can feature guys in the best ways sometimes that may even be some third downs and two minutes and how we'd work it through so um we're still kind of digging through that but i, I did like the way that the guys really came to compete dave i thought that part was loud and clear that uh, even after the first drive of allowing the touchdown to say, man, this, 
this we got a long way to play and um, getting stops after on third down I thought was a really big deal. Thanks, Coach. Scott. Hey, Dan. Uh, for Jaden, what he's been doing for the first four weeks of the season is not usually typical for a rookie quarterback to have the amount of success that he's having. Why do you think he's having this type of success so early? Well, I, Scott, I don't think it's it's not any like magic um, that's going into this. I, I know that's hard to say, but like he absolutely works his ass off. Like I will say that number one. Um, the time that he spends getting ready, getting prepared. Um, I'd said it the other night on this trip, you know, there's many nights their office on the quarterback room was, you know, just a few doors down from mine and, you know, Thursday nights and just staying in there, going through it again. And again, um, he really puts in the work. So when the game time comes, there's a confidence that comes from that. And so I love the connection that everybody in that quarterback room has it's um cliff obviously and brian and tavita and david blau and the other quarterbacks that are with them um, they really support the hell out of them and featuring players of the things that they can do well which Jaden can do a lot of things well but finding those things that the other receivers can do well in different spots different routes um i think that's some of of this but to think, you know, he would start like this. No, I don't think anybody would have said that. But what I would say is that if you're around him, you feel this work ethic and there's no, you know, magic pixie dust that we're throwing into him. Like it is absolutely grinding, working, and uh, a lot of confidence comes from that because he can enter the game knowing that he put the work in. Now, from a team perspective, it's a challenge to overcome adversity throughout the season, but it's a different challenge of how you handle success as a team. So, so as a coach, how do you want your players to handle this success? Well, I think one, um, you talk about it, you know, and you make sure uh, you want, the, you know, them to feel that emotion in the locker room after a win, you know, like they've worked really hard to put themselves into that space to do that. So seeing that and feeling that, like, that's a, that's a good thing. What you don't want to do is um, no tickets to the roller coaster, man. Like uh, we have a real process that we go through every single week to go get us ready to play. And so that begins today and all the way through tomorrow and into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have a theme of every day. And so by staying consistent in that approach, Scott, I think that helps avoid the highs and lows. And I hope and what I told the team earlier is like just an absolute obsession with getting better. And that's what we need to chase, not you know, what happened in the last game, but just an absolute obsession on things that we can improve on because, quite honestly, we think we can improve in a lot of areas. And so that's the challenge to, you know, do the things that are really hard to do and you got to do them a lot. And so that's the practice, that's the grind that goes into it. And so that's what we'll chase, man, like absolute obsession with us getting better. We'll finish with Wino. And you mentioned a lot early in the season about communication on defense and everybody kind of getting used to each other. Are, are the, the forced turnovers and, and those sort of things a result of that communication and, and getting coalesced? And what is the next step for this defense, kind of getting everybody on the same page still? Well, I would say they're on the same page. I, I would feel that way right now. By more communication, you get to, to play even faster and absolutely cut it loose with no hesitation. And that's the challenging part when you're facing some of the receivers, obviously that, you know, we've had, you know, through the first part of this season, but really clear, concise information. So you can absolutely, you know, go let it rip. The faster we play, the more aggressive we play. Those are when some of the takeaways and the hits and things happen. And so we'll continue to do that, but to see us play better at a two minute at the end of the half and play better on third down. A lot of that came from clear, concise communication and absolutely, you know, letting it rip. All right. Thanks coach. All right. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Thanks coach.